everyone and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope all of you are having a great week so far. Everyone, in this lesson we are looking at IELTS speaking part one and we are going to be talking about the stars. And I don't mean famous people, I mean the stars in the sky. <laughs> so uh, these were actually some IELTS questions that came up or similar questions I should say uh, to what came up in uh, some exams in the last month. Welcome uh, Tang, hi Anna, hi David, nice to see a lot of our students. Welcome Caroline, our chat moderator, good to have you helping out today. Uh, welcome Fuang and our members. Uh, Julia, nice to have you joining us in the class. Everybody, before we get into this part one, the questions about the stars, uh, again, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites. We use them in these live classes. We will use them today. They power these live classes. They have all of our practice exams, our audio materials. Uh, they contain a lot of great uh, tools to help you improve on your next IELTS exam. This is aehelp.com here. You can click that big red button that's just above my head to join the premium version of the course. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. It does not cost a lot of money. Our goal is to help as many students as possible. We are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. You can click that button. And then you can even use this code from one of our recent videos called Novel 9. It's a video that uh, has a part about, uh, talk about a book that you have read. So that's why we have this code Novel 9 to give you a little bit of extra help. General IELTS Help, it's gieltshelp.com. It's the green background. Again, just right above my head, this red button will get you access to the general IELTS exam materials for learning and practice for your official test. And uh, we also have apps that link to uh, these websites which uh, work in sync. Uh, Academic IELTS Help, for the academic website aehelp.com and general IELTS help for gieltshelp.com. We have lots of free content, free materials to help you out as well. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of great, great blogs on the websites. Uh, this one is for speaking part one on a different topic. I'll put it into the chat. You can check out that blog uh, when you have a minute and just get some more ideas about speaking part one. That's the topic of today's lesson, of course. Um, Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. Instagram, we are releasing reels uh, and information vocabulary to help, again, some more with your IELTS test. If you have questions, if you're not sure about where to do the test, when to do the test, or about English, or even questions about uh, starting university in another country, you can send us an email. My email address is adrian at aehelp.com, or you can send the emails to admin at aehelp.com, and we will help you out. We like emails, we answer all our emails, usually within 24 hours or less. Amazon has our books, AE Helps Academic IELTS and GE Helps General IELTS. For those students who like to have the physical books and actually flip through the pages, you can go to Amazon and buy our exam books there as well. Um, the schedule for this week. So we have live class right now, speaking part one. We will have uh, two live classes tomorrow and then another two on Saturday, so September 7th to September 9th. Lots of live IELTS to be had. Right now we have speaking part one for everybody. And then tomorrow we'll have task two writing for members. We'll have some uh, reading for subscribers. Definitely subscribe to the channel, it's free and there's tons of IELTS help to get you ready for your exam. 
Um, and then uh, on uh, Saturday, we will have speaking part two and speaking part three as well. So uh, tomorrow classes start earlier by uh, an hour and a half. So 90 minutes earlier start. All right, uh, there are always videos that you can look at on the YouTube channel. This is one of our most recent ones. You can check that out. Okay. Um, Hishikesh, uh, good luck on your IELTS exam with the other sections. I will keep my fingers crossed. You get a great score. Okay, students, uh, let's get into some speaking. So uh, here we are looking at IELTS speaking part one, as I mentioned. And the goal to maximize your practice, your efficiency, is speak and repeat. Um, of course, we are all busy people in today's world. We have a lot on our plate. We have school, we have work, we have friends, we have family, we have our hobbies, reading, video games, movies, exercise. There's just a lot to do. So you want to be efficient. The, the trick to being happy these days is definitely always looking at learning effectively, learning efficiently, doing your um, endeavors effectively. So to do this uh, and get the most from it, don't be shy, speak and repeat. Copy what I say, copy how I say it. My accent is a West Coast North American, Canadian American accent. It's very clear. It's the accent you hear in most or many Hollywood movies. Many of them are actually filmed right here in Victoria, Vancouver. It's the North Hollywood, if you will. Of course, Los Angeles being the home to the original Hollywood. Okay, um, so you go to your IELTS exam center as Hishikesh did just recently. Your speaking is separate from your listening, reading, writing part of the test. That's why Hishikesh said that I have the other sections on Saturday. Right, so your speaking can be before or after uh, your listening, reading, and writing. Um, it's good if it's on a different day. It's nice to just focus on the speaking only. Now, the most basic tip, of course, is speak English as much as possible and definitely speak English on the day of your exam. It's quite important that you keep your brain in English mode uh, before you go and talk to this examiner for 15 minutes. So you go to your exam center, arrive an hour early, aim to arrive an hour early. So if there's any kind of situation on your way to the exam center, you're not going to be too stressed out. You'll still have some time. You have to get there 20 minutes early to register for your speaking test where you show your passport or your ID that you use to register. You give your name, they give you a number, um, you leave your valuables and your um, accessories like your watch, your phone in that special room, they lock it, they, they guard it. Um, and then uh, you take a bottle of water, your uh, pen, pencil, maybe an eraser, which is not, in my opinion, not really needed for um, the speaking. And then, uh, and then you meet with your examiner 20 minutes after you register. Now in that time, while you are waiting, uh, don't be counting um, the uh, dots on the walls. Instead, practice your English and remember your strategies, okay? So, uh, your biggest strategy, and now hopefully many people know this because I have been emphasizing this in the last few classes, Thank you, MK Determination. MK Determination says, really, I love your teaching style. I appreciate that. that I, I value feedback and I value criticism. If anybody finds something strange or awkward or ineffective in my teaching style, let me know. I like to improve. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so remember your strategies and, and you should think about this. So don't just kind of go to the exam center and then go, oh, whatever's happening, happening. Um, no, just really remember your strategies. So for example, uh, definitely think, okay, I have to answer, uh, give an explanation 
and an example. With the ex explanation, I should always be thinking because, right? The examiner is always thinking why. They're like, why, 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 why? So you're always thinking because. And then um, an example. And so um, real life, okay? Real life. All right, um, let me show you. Let's just jump to this uh, first uh, question. So the examiner, um, as they get into the speaking part one, uh, they'll say, let's talk about the stars. And hopefully uh, many of you will realize, okay, stars has multiple meanings here. Stars could be like popular people, but generally we don't say, let's talk about the stars. Do you know? Angelina Jolie or have you ever met Brad Pitt um, that's usually not the way that they say it they would say let's talk about celebrities or let's talk about famous people so in this case when they say let's talk about the stars they literally mean the stars in the sky right so um, the stars in the sky and then uh, here um, the first question do you enjoy looking at the stars okay again some of you might be thinking oh Adrian's Kind of doing a crazy topic today guess what this was the topic of the IELTS speaking in the last few weeks okay everybody got that that's important so if some of you're like whoa why is Adrian talking about the stars for part one it was actually the topic of IELTS speaking in the last few weeks okay this is like okay got it right yeah, why? Why do you think stars would be a topic on the IELTS? So why do you think? Hopefully, some of you that have been practicing and studying realize that while well, part one is a topic that everybody should be able to talk about, right? So like a band level one or a band level two person might understand this and their answer might be something like, yes, I do okay this is a band two <laughs> All right. maybe a three All right it's correct English but it's just three words right um, yes I do All right Anahita says because it's an interesting topic it's not just because it's an interesting topic um, Anahita it's because everybody is familiar with stars right so stars is not biased by gender race religion we all Look at the stars. They are there for everybody. So um, you should know that when IELTS chooses topics, they choose topics that are gender, age, uh, culturally neutral. Okay. That they don't always completely succeed, but they do their best for sure. So IELTS chooses topics that are neutral uh, for gender, age, culture and religion and is common to all people and believe it or not there are a lot of topics like that we have a lot more in common than people uh, sometimes think and uh, stars for example is one of those and you're thinking you know okay <laughs> I gotta try to think about this as much as possible right makes sense okay all right, um, so again, remember, answer, explain, example. So do you enjoy looking at the stars? Yes, I do is a good start, okay? Um, I would say, and again, be yourself. So me personally, I would say I love looking at the stars. Now, if somebody, and this would be like a band eight, okay? There is a band nine way to do this. Anybody knows the band nine expression? Yeah, Abhishek, close. It's actually one word. Um, Abhishek says stars gazing. I love stargazing. One word. It's a verb. I love stargazing because it makes me feel uh, special to be able to look at all of the uh, sparkling 
beauty of the universe and to wonder what is there. In fact, I found myself looking at the stars just last night for like 15 minutes. Okay, so this would be your band nine answer. All right, again, just repeat after me. Um, I love looking at the stars because, okay, you still need that explanation and example. That would be a band eight. When you start using some very nice specific vocabulary to the topic as well, then you start to get into that band nine, okay? I love stargazing because it makes me feel special to be able to look at all the sparkling beauty of the universe and to wonder what is there. In fact, I found myself looking at the stars just last night for like 15 minutes, okay? Um, even better, and this is again, if I'm practicing at home, I will make these corrections. I would say I lost myself looking at the stars just last night for like 15 minutes. I don't know about you, but at times I do find that I lose myself looking at the stars. What does that mean, lose myself? It means that I just start looking and I kind of zone out. I forget where I am or maybe even who I'm with. And I'm just kind of looking at the stars and somebody says, hey Adrian, what are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm just looking at the stars, right? They're looking really beautiful tonight. So I lost myself looking at the stars. Okay, a couple of nice uh, pieces of vocabulary there for you to remember and to practice and to use, right? Okay. David says like when we say lost track of time, exactly, okay, exactly, Fatima, when you don't notice that time passes. Abhishek says when we look at the stars, we realize how small we are. Yes, now remember everybody, um, task one, and this is an important tip here, that speaking part one, we could call it task one, but it's part one. Um, so part one is about you okay be very careful not to generalize okay uh, it's a common mistake so uh, a lot of times I find that candidates will say oh uh, stargazing is fun because we can and people can um, this is wrong okay the question is asking about you. So make sure that you answer about you. In everyday conversation, people often don't pay enough attention to their subjects and their nouns and their speech. So they say people, we, us, you, and they don't really pay attention to who specifically the discussion is about. In the IELTS and for good communication, you have to pay more attention to that, okay? It has an effect on the results of your communication and definitely on your IELTS score, okay? Yeah, so Rupinder says in the chat, also, uh, we do not say you in part one. Yeah, it's best to um, avoid saying you. Okay. All right. Um, let's try some more of these questions. So, how often do you gaze at the starry sky? So, lots of vocabulary with stars. Um, starry is the adjective. So, when you have lots of stars in the sky, it's a starry <laughs> sky. So, again, a nice. Um, Nice expression there. Abhishek says the pole star is north pointing star. Abhishek, I'm going to give you an answer here and correct your English. Pay attention. This is Abhishek Pawar. It's a different Abhishek. So I would say that I probably look up at the starry sky at least once or uh, twice a week, uh, especially 
to see if I can find the big or little uh, dipper and of course Polaris the North Star okay the North Star is called Polaris think about the top and the bottom of the earth are called the North and South Pole so it's the polar the star is called Polaris Polaris is the last star in the tail of the Little Dipper now who can impress me anybody know the actual name of the big and little dipper in English and this is where you can really shine so if you can present this vocabulary or I should say when you present this vocabulary to the examiner they will be like wow thank you I can now impress the people around me okay so these are, you know, some people are like, well, where do you learn that? I mean, it's not, I didn't take um, astronomy. Uh, I just uh, kind of paid attention. Um, Julia says, superior and inferior, almost. Tatiana says, sounds meditative. All right. The uh, Big Dipper. is called Ursa Major and the Little Dipper as some of you probably figured this out Little Dipper is called Ursa Minor okay Ursa Major Ursa Minor uh, the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper by the way some of you are like what is Adrian talking about so the Little Dipper and the Big Dipper are the constellations Ooh, there's another new word that look kind of like this I don't know the exact number of stars but they look like this so they have these kind of handles they look like a ladle okay that's called a ladle in English uh, that you scoop your soup with okay so it's called a ladle there's a lot to learn when you're learning about stars stars are actually a really good topic to study in English because stars are a big part of human history and a lot of our science our knowledge is connected to stars so we identify with stars uh, constellations represent different parts of our belief systems or mythologies even the tools that we use like this so you even have tools that we use um, another one would be Orion's belt okay so you can actually learn a lot of English by learning about the stars the stars are a big part of navigation finding our way around the earth they're a big part of physics and science so learning about the stars isn't just a silly idea it's actually a good idea to do in English learn the basics because you will learn a lot of good English with it a lot of expressions um, use the stars lots of idioms use the stars so learning about the stars is a really good idea all right keep that in mind okay so again just some uh, vocabulary here and be an active learner right this is what I mean about effective efficient learning right so a ladle is a large spoon used to scoop soup like the gods might do with Ursa Minor ha 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 laugh out loud <laughs> right? okay um, so keep that in mind okay now let's go back to this question so again here we are with this question okay how often do you gaze at the starry sky repeat how often do you gaze at the starry sky? I would say that I probably look up at the starry sky at least once or twice a week, especially to see if I can find the big or little dipper. 
And of course, Polaris, the North Star. Now, that's in the Northern Hemisphere, everybody. So I'm in Victoria, Canada. We're in the North. So we see the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, and Polaris. But I'm sure in the Southern Hemisphere, um, people are looking for very different constellations, right? So we even have a, a member who has constellation as her ID, right, Fong? One of your... Um, fellow uh, Vietnamese classmates. Uh, she's not here with us today, but uh, I know many of you know her. Uh, constellations are the formations of stars uh, in the sky that represent certain um, figures or objects or gods, right? Those are called constellations. Constellations, the set of stars that make up a figure in the sky and used by our ancestors to navigate and find direction. Okay. Abhishek says, like Orion. Right, Abhishek, Orion again. I think Orion switches between the north and the south, if I'm not mistaken, right? <laughs> Juan Pablo says, I'm guessing Constellation knows this topic very well. Perhaps she might be sad that she missed this class. Um, all right. So let's take a look at the next question. What do you feel when you look at the stars? I think we're going to have some fun answers for this one. So what do you feel when you look at the stars? I'm going to give you an answer. You do the same, we'll share. There are a lot of different answers you could give for this. And if you communicate clearly, you can get a band nine. Staring at the stars fills me with curiosity. since it helps me realize just how much is in the universe and that we are likely not alone and there is life on other planets. I'm sure one day we will be visited by extra terrestrials <coughs> excuse me extraterrestrials look at that word extra means more terrain means land and alls in this case means a living being so beings that live on extra land extraterrestrials Okay, extraterrestrials. There's a nice long high level word for everybody. Use that in your IELTS correctly and the examiner will, oh, okay. You didn't just say aliens, you said extraterrestrials. Wow, and you pronounced it correctly. Extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials. Okay, try that one, it's a mouthful, okay. So staring at the stars fills me with curiosity, fills me with curiosity. Look at that expression, right? When you have an emotion, then you can say it fills me with curiosity. Or some of you might say, stirs up a sense of romance, right? Looking at the stars is often considered romantic and feeling romantic is a feeling and you get a stirring of romance okay so stirs up a sense of romance some people might be filled with fear looking at the stars learning how small and insignificant we are in the universe right there are a lot of good answers out there Anna says, truth be told, I have mixed 
feelings when I'm looking at stars. First of all, I feel satisfied because I believe in horoscopes. Um, is a better way to say that on it. And secondly, I feel butterflies in my stomach because stars are so far from the earth. From the earth and they are so big. And this makes me feel extremely small and vulnerable. Okay, I'm finishing uh, your sentence here, uh, Anna. The word vulnerable means easy to injure or to get hurt. And definitely when we see those big astronomical bodies, right? You see all those YouTube videos these days that say, don't say very on your IELTS exam. It's true, if you have better vocabulary, you will get a better score. Um, instead of saying very big, you can say astronomical. Now, any word that starts with astro means it's of the stars, okay? So that's why astronomy, astro, meaning of the stars, okay? Um, that's why here, Anna, we wouldn't likely say because I believe in horoscopes because I believe in astrology. Okay, uh, don't confuse astrology with astronomy. All right, that's a funny confusion. I've made that in the past. Uh, don't do that. All right, so astrology is the uh, pseudo science of horoscopes. Some of you are like, Adrian, how dare you call that a pseudoscience? I'm not the one calling it pseudoscience. That's what it's called. Okay, it's the pseudoscience of horoscopes. It's fact. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, so astrology is the pseudoscience of horoscopes and astronomy is the science of the stars okay so don't confuse astrology with astronomy okay astronomy is the science of studying the stars and astrology is the pseudoscience of horoscopes like you are born as a Gemini I'm born as a cancer and there's always a horoscope that's attached with that month for every day okay Li Fong this is a live class that's why you're here commenting that's why I'm answering your question is this a live class it is a live class all right, um, here we go. Uh, next question, everybody. Uh, can you recognize any constellations? If so, which ones? Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, Adrian, what if I never heard that word constellations before? Well, you can guess from can you recognize. So uh, be smart, everybody. When you're in the IELTS exam, pay close attention to the question. Okay. You know that you're talking about stars. You might not know the word constellations, but as soon as you hear the word, can you recognize something, something stars, right? You can figure out that, oh, we're probably talking about star formations here. And if so, which ones, right? So uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Yes. As I had just mentioned, I can clearly recognize uh, Ursa Major and Minor, especially when I find the bright uh, Polaris. As well, I can uh, find Orion on a clear night. Aside from these three, 
I need to use the Google uh, sky map to figure out the other star formations. Okay. Really cool app out there, Google Sky. You can aim your phone at the sky and it will show you. A lot of people don't know that one. Google's got so many products. Um, Google Sky is a cool one. It will show you the planets, the constellations, and the likes, the star formations. It's kind of fun. You can really impress the people that you're with. You're like, hey, look over there. What's that? Oh, did you know Ryan's over there? How did you know that? Uh, you know. <laughs> right? Abhishek says, yes, I use it. <laughs> All right. For all those gentlemen out there impressing the ladies right hey this guy knows his constellations um all right so uh, look at this here uh connection yes as i had just mentioned okay make sure to use this and um again when you have the vocabulary and you use big dipper and little dipper previously and you're like hey wait a second I can do some clever paraphrasing here then in the next answer you can say Ursa major Ursa minor your examiner most likely will know those terms okay all right Bunyad says I live in Uzbekistan I bet you there are lots of stars that you can see in many parts of Uzbekistan okay all right Good. Um, Jahidul, yes, the app works even if there's light pollution, simply because it doesn't actually have to look at the sky. It's using geo positioning. Okay, um, let's do this question here. Have you ever used a telescope to look at stars and how was the experience? Answer that question. Let's see what you come up with. Bebek, that's a nice answer. Bebek says, quite frankly, I do not recognize, <coughs> sorry, um, <laughs> quite frankly, I do not recognize any of the constellations, though I'm always fascinated with the stars and the constellations, so I use an app to observe them. Yeah, Bebek, that's good. And if you can name the app, that's always better. So be specific. So I use the Google Sky app to figure out the constellations and to observe them. Okay. All right. Now here, have you ever used present perfect, everybody? So your answer has to be present perfect. Yes, I have. I have used both a lens and a mirrored uh, telescope to stargaze. In fact, a few years ago, I was at the uh, Victoria. Uh, what's that place called where they have a really big telescope to look at the stars? Let's see who's got that vocabulary. Who's going to be the first one to tell me? Oh, yeah, Abhishek, you're already using it. I can see it in your sentence. Good. Nicely done. This is Abhishek Pawar again. And I can tell that this is in your neck of the woods. It means it's a familiar topic. Yeah, it's called an observatory. Very good, Julia. Yes. So a few years ago, I was at the Victoria Observatory. So the observatory is a uh, place with a large telescope of some sorts or device to look at the sky uh, to learn about the sky and the universe. Okay. So in fact, a few years ago, I was at the Victoria Observatory and I had the fortune of looking through a massive old school telescope okay all right um now notice how immediately i use the present perfect yes i have i have used both a lens and a mirrored telescope to stargaze let's see who's been uh, using the um course at aehelp.com here 
um, which we're going to use in just a moment. In one of the listening exercises, one of the listening tests, we learn about who kind of invented these telescopes. So who are a couple of the key scientists for the uh, lens telescope? Who was a key scientist? And for the mirror telescope, who was a key scientist? Anybody remember from your other IELTS materials? It's really good, students, to connect um, ideas between your IELTS um, materials. Carolina, very good. Hero, very good. Anahita, yeah. Galileo for the lens telescope. Galileo, I believe. Uh, I'm wrong. Galileo, one L. Okay, I thought two. Galileo. No, it's Galileo. Uh, Galileo, and that's right, Julia Isaac Newton for the mirrored telescope. Very good. Ayush, the moon is not a star. The moon is a moon. Okay. Um, we're going to do a little bit of uh, speaking now. We're going to get some volunteers. As people are figuring out how to volunteer, it's uh, right here. I'm going to get some of you to help me answer these questions. And to volunteer, go to aehelp.com. Okay, uh, Carolina, if you could put the instructions into the chat. Thank you. All right. Um, and while you're following these instructions, uh, just for fun, um, our planet is called Earth. We call our planet Earth. Our star is called the Sun. That's our star that our Earth spins around. And around our Earth spins our moon. What is the name of our moon? So while you're setting that up, moon is a smaller object that circles the larger object, like our moon circles the Earth. That's right, Anahita. That's right, Can Plays. Chayani. Close. Anna. It's called Luna. She's called Luna, I should say. So <clears throat> the Earth is our planet, the Sun is our star, and Luna is our moon. A lot of people get confused because we call Earth Earth, we call the Sun Sun, but we just say moon for moon. We don't call it Luna. We should. We should be saying, hey, look how beautiful Luna is today because it's our moon. She's special. Call her Luna. That's my change in the world. <laughs> my, my quiet change that I want to create through teaching IELTS. Convince people to call the moon Luna instead of just the moon. Okay. Carolina says Luna is moon in Spanish. Amazing, Carolina. So in Spanish, we just call moon all moons by the name of our moon, which makes some sense, right? Okay. All right, everybody. So volunteering it is. Uh, you had a head start, so hopefully many of you are already there, right? Let's jump to our website, aehelp.com. Again, for all of you who want to learn quickly and effectively for IELTS, join the premium course by clicking the big red button that's just above my head. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access, six full practice exams, over 100 videos for listening, reading, writing, speaking. You can even register in some countries for your home-based IELTS exam through the website. Okay, so we've got lots and lots there for you. Tons of courses, interactive courses, lesson videos, audio CDs, so much more. Um, you can download the app, by the way, uh, simply by uh, just uh, hitting that QR code, okay? And right now, we are going to use this function here, uh, which is the uh, student partner speaking. You can use that for free, too, by the way. Some of you are like, oh, no, now I have to pay. No, you don't. You can use this for free, okay? But it's definitely worth getting the course. No question about it. Um, you can also get the course through Shopify, through YouTube. Uh, some of you are probably in many countries will see there's a academic and general IELTS premium course in the YouTube video on Shopify. So you can get it through Shopify 
and then um, just send us an email and say, I bought it through Shopify, activate my premium course, we'll activate it and you're good to go, okay? All right, uh, so uh, we click on student partner speaking, accept the terms that you're good to go, okay? And then you will see a nice list of students here. So we have Abiraj, we have Maya, our premium student. Pay attention to these uh, premium students because they're often here. We have one of our regular students, Juan Pablo, who's volunteering, uh, Munavar. Uh, Shiesta, Julia, a premium student from Hungary, Julia, right? Uh, Fuang, um, one of our members and regular students. Very nice to see you, Fuang. And then uh, we have Aditya, our premium students. Good, join in, have fun, okay? Just give me a second here, I have to unwind my, there we go, my headset. Okay, and then we will jump in. So you're going to find me in here as well, everybody. You're going to find me in here as master, all big letters, okay? And then send me a notification, say, I'd like to practice. Um, let's give Munavar a chance here right away. Munavar, are you ready? And uh, now you will hear what the IELTS speaking interview is like, especially the start with the introduction and uh, part one. Nguyen says, give Fuang a shot. Yes, Fuang, I'm going to do my best here. I know that you had some difficulty last week. Okay, Munavar, here we go. Hi, Munavar, how are you? Yes, sir, I'm fine. What about you? I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, Munavar, can you um, tell everybody where you are right now and why you're doing the IELTS exam? Yes, sir, I am from Pakistan, from the city of, uh, uh, you can say, a city of light, Karachi. And uh, I would like to apply for a master's uh, for the applying of Germany. So definitely I need to pursue masters uh, so I need uh, to do IELTS. Okay, all right. Uh, what do you plan to do your master's in? Sir, uh, I am. I have a plan to do a master's in a wind energy engineering. So definitely it's a uh, particular subject regarding the electrical engineering. Awesome, wind energy. I've, I've always been curious about wind energy. That's that's uh, great, Munavar. Sustainable energy, we really need it. So that's good definitely. for you. It's also all about the renewable energy. That's great. Okay, Munavar, well, let me help you with that. I will conduct the first part of the interview here with you. Are you ready? Yes, definitely. I'm okay. ready. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be uh, your examiner for this part of the test. And I will give you instructions for each part. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Um, before we continue, may I see your identification? Yes, of course. This is my passport, which I used to register here. Please have a look. What is your full name? Uh, my name is Manawar and my family name is Ali. So you can call me by my first name, Manawar. Where do you live? Sorry? Where do you live? I live in uh, uh, Karachi, which is the city of uh, Pakistan. What is your hobby? Uh, normally my hobby is uh, to read book and uh, whenever I feel uh, much energetic as uh, normal, so definitely I spend my time with uh, to hit a uh, gym as uh, today morning. Uh, I, I, I definitely uh, I spend my uh, approximately 30 minutes for uh, doing different types of exercise. Let's talk about the stars. Do you enjoy looking at the stars? Yes, I always uh, looking at the stars and uh, definitely when I see the stars, uh, so I always think about how, or you can say, uh, how beautiful is it uh, and uh, how can I reach there 
and uh, I always uh, try to uh, uh, read about uh, the, li la the life, uh, what kind of uh, uh, opportunities uh, of the aliens who live there and as well. All right, um, let's stop there, Munabar. Uh, I'm going to give you some feedback. Uh, first of all, very good. So uh, your band score for these answers so far, I would estimate you at around, <clears throat> excuse me, at around a band uh, seven, okay? So right. your fluency is an eight. Uh, your pronunciation is um, seven, five, eight. It's very clear. Um, your uh, lexical resource is about a 7. Your grammatical range and accuracy is about a 6.5 to 7. Uh, so overall coherence uh, is about a 7 and that's the main concept is the coherence. How clearly, how well do I understand you and how accurate is, is the language. So that's it's about a 7 which is it means good English. Okay, so band six means you're fluent. I think you're a little bit more than just fluent. I think you have good English. Okay. All right, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, now, let me give you a little bit more feedback so you can make more use of it and you can see where you can make corrections. Okay. Yes. So I asked you, and this is of course for everybody. So not just for Munavar, but everybody listen up because mistakes are common. Often the same mistakes are made by many, many candidates from different countries, different cultures. So here I asked you, may I see your identity? Identification. You said, yes, of course, this is my passport, which I used to register here. Please take a look. That was good. That was accurate. And I really liked how you made no mistakes there. It was a very nice, clear, fluent sentence. Uh, then you introduced yourself and you said, you can call me Munavar. I really liked how you told me what to be called. It's better to say, please call me. It's just more polite in this situation. But saying you can call me is okay, too. Um, so you said, you can call me Munavar. Uh, it let me realize that you prepared for this test you knew that i was going to ask you what should i call you if you don't tell me that answer so that was very smart okay yes. okay okay and then i asked you where do you live what is your hobby do you enjoy looking at the stars and you answered all of those questions i understood your answers however all of your answers contained some kind of a mistake that was unnatural so your goal munavar is to identify those unnatural mistakes and to correct them and to learn them okay so for instance okay. here where do you live you said I live in Karachi which is uh, the city of Pakistan um, you need to be clear here so we wouldn't say it that way you should say I live in Karachi which is one of the biggest cities in Pakistan okay all right. Not of Pakistan, but in Pakistan. And then you kind of stopped. You weren't sure what to say. Um, just finish with where you actually live. I live in a three bedroom house. Okay. Okay. And then it's clear. So can you just repeat that after me? I live in Karachi, which is one of the biggest cities in Pakistan. I live in a three bedroom house. I live in Karachi, which is in Pakistan. And uh, I live in a three bedroom, three bed drying dine house. Good. So with these kinds of questions and answers, the quote unquote simple ones, you can't make too many mistakes. You gotta, you have to have, to get a band eight or even a 7.5, you have to have um, at least every, let's say second question answered without mistakes. Does that make sense? Okay. To get a band eight, you have to have like 70%, 80% with no mistakes. To get a band nine, it has to be almost perfect. You can't have mistakes anywhere really not big ones okay so careful um, what is your hobby uh, you said um, I like reading books and exercise when I feel much energetic again awkward English you would never say I feel much energetic when I feel quite energetic when I feel very energetic or just simply when I feel energetic not using any kind of modifier okay okay um, and then, do you enjoy looking at the stars? You said, yes, I always looking at the stars. You have to emphasize that M. If you're having trouble emphasizing the M, then don't use the contraction. Yes, I am always looking at the stars. It's a missing B verb there, right? So just repeat oh, after right. me. Yes, I am always looking at the stars. Mm, all right. Just repeat me, Manwar. I just want it to fix in your thinking. Yes, I am always looking at the stars. 
Yes, I am always looking at the stars. Good. Uh, I encourage you and I encourage everybody else, of course, also to not use contractions in part one. Try to avoid them. Once you have made it very clear for the examiner that you know those auxiliary verbs like the be and the have and the could and the would, then later in part two and part three, you can start using contractions like I'm, I'd, I've. Okay, but in the beginning, say them. I am, I have, I could, okay? All right. Okay, thank you for being my first volunteer. Thank you, thank you, sir. All right, Munavar, have an awesome rest of your day in Karachi, and I wish you the best with your master's uh, uh, studies and plans. Thank you, sir, thank you. Bye, Munavar. Bye. All right, that was Munavar, probably quite late where he's at, but... Uh, a really great effort by Munavar. It was very nice. Let's give him a thumbs up. That was awesome. Um, practice makes perfect. And again, we want to learn from each other. Okay. All right. Let's give Fuang a chance here, everybody. She's so studious and had uh, so many issues. Uh, let's try it out. Are you ready? Yeah, Fuang, hopefully it works. Now, the good news, Fuang, is that uh, very soon, later this month, we will start to have live streaming on the website as well. And that will be a different system. So that should fix some of these issues in some parts of the world. Okay, Fuang, here we go. Hi, Fuang. Can you hear me? Oh, Fong, I don't hear you again. But as you can hear, I just spoke with Munavar from Pakistan, which is to the northeast of where you're at. But again, you know, if it works in Pakistan, it should be working in Vietnam as well. I really wish that, uh, you know, maybe reach out to Constellation or to one of your other classmates who's in um, uh, Vietnam and see what's going on, how they have it set up. Okay. Um, all right, Fuang, check into it. I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Send me an email. Uh, send me some screenshots. Okay. Uh, we're here to help, by the way, everybody. You shouldn't feel like, uh, you know, you don't have any assistance. If you're having any issues using any part of the website, just take a screenshot. Tell us what kind of operating system, where you are, what you're doing. And we've got some really smart people um, helping and working on our side here that can um, help you out here. Okay. All right, um, let's reach out to one of our premium students, Tatiana. Tatiana, are you ready? We'll jump around. We've got a good bit of time, everybody. So, Julia, it'd be nice to have you volunteer as well. I know you volunteered, I believe, last week. So it'd be great to hear your voice again. Um, being brave, building confidence is very important for the IELTS exam. Tatiana, if you are ready, I'm sure you are. I just want to make sure you're there. You haven't gotten up and left yet for some other project. Okay. So if you're there, let me know. I'm always checking. Uh, I know Tatiana is always ready, so I'm just going to... Uh, should I? Should I just give her a call? Let's see. Let's be brave. Julia says, okay. Cover tomorrow we have task two. Hi, Tatiana. Tatiana, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. I am. Okay. Hi. How are you doing, Tatiana? Oh, you won't believe it, but I'm doing tremendously great, and I can't help but sharing the news. Uh, mm. I, I've started teaching at university. Oh, congratulations. That's fantastic. Uh, which, yes, it is. Which university, may I ask? Um, <clears throat> I'm teaching 
future sport journalists and economists uh, the English language of their professional field. It's uh, the university is the Presidential Academy of Agriculture and uh, State Service. Where? In Moscow. In Moscow. Russia. Okay, that's sure. great. Sports journalism. Interesting. Yes, so very interesting. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, the students are of a uh, very good level of English. And what's more, they are motivated and very intelligent. So I'm fully motivated to do my best. As a teacher. That is great. Yeah, one of the fun parts, and I know this from what I'm doing and having all of you here with me in this class today, is it's really a joy to be a teacher when the students want to be there and want to learn. That makes teaching extremely uh, rewarding. So I can uh, empathize with you, Tatiana. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Tatiana, are you ready to talk about stars? As ready as always, <laughs> All <laughs> an right. amazing topic. <laughs> let's do it. So let's talk about the stars. Um, yes, how often do you gaze at the starry sky? Uh, I, I don't often gaze at uh, the starry sky because in Moscow, where I live now, this the sky is not always clear and uh, only a few uh, stars can be seen such as Polaris but uh, whenever I am at the sea when the sky looks like uh, diamond uh, covered like covered with diamonds I uh, gaze at uh, this beautiful sky every night when I'm here and uh, think of uh, the amazing shape of the stars, how big they are and how hot is here, all the protuberances. What do you feel when you look at the stars? Uh, I feel discombobulated, I would say, because I know about the tremendous size and uh, extremely hot temperature of stars and uh, I'm always I always imagine what it would be like to come closer to the stars and all those thoughts uh, give me a mixed feelings of of how small I am in comparison with the universe Okay, I'll stop there for a second. It gives me mixed feelings. Feelings, of yes. How small I am in comparison to the universe. Very nice. To English. the universe. Yeah, okay. that's very accurate. Very nice English. Um, okay, let me give you some feedback. So um, definitely in the 7.58 range, I would say almost closer to the eight this time, which is very good English. Um, I'll explain to you why it's a 758 and not more where the mistakes lie and what you could do to kind of get a higher band score if you're going to sit the IELTS exam. So anybody who feels like, okay, I have kind of the same level of English as Tatiana and uh, I'm going to sit the IELTS in the next couple days, what should I do? Because it's very challenging. So to move from an eight to a nine, it takes a lot of effort and often a lot of time because you do have to really have a lot of practice with some of these more precise kinds of words in certain situations. Let me explain to you, Tatiana. So Tatiana, first of all, your vocabulary in certain aspects is outstanding. Discombobulated. Wow, I don't often hear non-native speakers use the word discombobulated. To tell you the truth, um, I have learned it just yesterday from <laughs> one of my sports journalism <laughs> students. I said, yeah, I see your puzzled faces. I see some of you look puzzled and they and they uh, went back even discombobulated and they learned they taught me this word yeah um, you can even uh, think about the expression I feel in pieces oh mm -hmm. um, and in pieces is the very simple way of saying discombobulated it means like pulled apart <laughs> in different pieces yeah so um, yes uh, and then um, you know you so definitely you're using some very nice um, vocabulary there uh, let, but you also got yourself into trouble and yeah. that's <laughs> like, yeah, that sounds familiar. Um, one of the tricky parts, especially when someone has good English and native speakers, professors sometimes do this as well, where they get so deep in their thought and what mm -hmm. they're saying is that they dig a hole 
that's tricky to get out of. <laughs> <laughs> and they're kind of like, um, oh, one of my colleagues is calling me. I'll be back, students. And then they run out. Um, but uh, no, it's it happens to all of us. It's happened to me certainly a number of times as well. So um, let me just uh, kind of, so one tip is when you're in the IELTS and you want to get that 8.5 or 9, because for teaching jobs, for example, if you're teaching English in university and so forth, oftentimes you will be required to have an 8.5 in the speaking section. Uh -huh. So so attention for that. So in IELTS, it's strategy, right? You, it's not about the truth. It's about strategy. And I know what you're thinking, Tatiana. Well, you know, this is a practice class. So I'm going to practice. And you're right. You should. But in the real IELTS, when you're doing the real test, definitely keep in mind that you want to just give a good answer good explanation maybe an example and then stop talking don't okay, get yourself yeah, yeah, into yeah, a situation it makes sense okay. uh, i should i should stay calm, calm and composed yeah. and and focus so let me explain focused, to, yeah, <clears throat> yeah let me explain to everybody it, it, with the case in point here so um i asked how often do you gaze at the starry sky and you said um i don't often gaze at the starry sky because in moscow where i live now the sky is not always clear and until there it's very good it's a band eight band nine and then you said and only a few stars can be seen like uh polaris right mm -hmm. and that was really good and until then you're still a band nine and you're using great vocabulary but then you got yourself uh, into trouble okay, because you started... then I should have I should have gone to the example yeah and it, so you should have said like there's a lot of smoke pollution and often it's overcast with clouds so that's why I don't see clouds in Moscow if you have that okay if not just stop yeah, there it's, it's too How... overclouded it it's overcast overcast the sky is overcast yeah overcast first year is university tricky. material <laughs> the sky is overcast yeah like covered with diamonds it's not covered with diamonds it's speckled with yeah. diamonds okay so that's where you got yourself into trouble and that's where the ex you're giving the examiner so much information that the examiner's thinking Mm, all right. If you're a band nine, you would know that it would be speckled or crusted, crusted mm -hmm. or speckled mm -hmm. with diamonds, crusted, speckled. And that's tricky. So it's better to stick to the vocabulary I'm 100 percent sure about. Yeah, what? absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and especially when you start using literary devices. So mm -hmm. you're using similes yeah. or metaphors. Uh, in your speech, which is good for band eight, band nine. If you can use a simile, it's like Correctly. it's like a black velvet sheet speckled with diamonds. If you can use similes like that, sure, but you have to use them correctly, right? That's the key. Otherwise, uh -huh, they can uh -huh. get really weird. So that's a really important tip for those high band students. And thank you so much, Tatiana, for uh, helping me explain that to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It was great to hear from you. Goodbye. Thank you. And thank you for sharing the word discombobulated. Now so many more <laughs> now so many more people know what this awesome word <laughs> means. You're I love the sound of welcome. it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Bye Tatiana. And bye again, bye. congrats. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All right. Discombobulated. That'll impress people. Dis combobulated now if uh, some of you are studying linguistics right the study of languages then looking at the word discombobulated and its etymology its history its roots its prefix uh, suffix is a very interesting word discombobulated <laughs> okay all right uh julia are you ready let's see if julia is there Okay, we've got time students, so keep volunteering, keep practicing. Here we go. Hopefully Julia will answer our call or request here. Perfect. Hi, sir. Hi, Julia. How are you? Um. Great, thank you. I was just squirming a moment ago. <laughs> Sorry, what were you doing? Squirming? Screaming. Screaming. Yeah. Why because were you? I'm always nervous when I need to speak out loud. So. <laughs> okay. 
Squirming is actually not a bad word for that too. Squirming is like, ugh, it's like you're fidgeting in your seat because you're all nervous. So that's what I thought you said. Um, all right, but you were screaming. All right, Julia, well, you're here. Are you ready? And right now you're in Budapest, yes? No, I'm, De I'm in Debrecen now, so. You're in Debrecen, okay. Yes. All right. Um, it sounds like you're quite, it's quite a loud place. Are you in the city somewhere on the street? No, I'm at home, but uh, I live next to the one of the noisiest road in here. So I'm just going to close my window. So <laughs> okay, got is it. it better now? It definitely is. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, but let me tell you, it's not as loud as some other places. Uh, Fuang uh, lives in a very loud place. Oh, I see. Can, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, Julia, let's get into this. So are you ready to answer a few questions about the stars for speaking part one? Yes. All right. Uh, let's do it. Um, let's uh, go with this one here. Uh, can you recognize any of the constellations? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it again. So, uh, sure, I can. So, uh, when I was a child, it uh, was one of my obsession to recognize as many constellation as I can do, and uh, one of the most recognizable is a uh, constellation of the Taurus or a ball. Uh, or a ball. Uh, also, it's right next to to the ball is also an Orion, the hunter, what is connected to the Greek uh, mythology. Um, yes, I think these two constellations are, um, are have you yes. have you ever <laughs> used a telescope to look at the stars and how was your experience yes uh, i i have used it uh, a couple of times um due to my university studies uh, there is uh, uh, there is a science night uh, each uh, each year and uh, we can try uh we we'll try ourselves in, uh, at the stargazing um, uh, through the telescope. So if I have a chance, I I do it each year. And uh, and uh, there is a big difference when uh, you are just uh, look up to the sky uh, by your eyes, and uh, it's. A huge difference when yeah, okay. a huge difference when you look it through the telescope because it's uh, it feels that you are so close. Okay, uh, to I'm gonna course. stop. I'm gonna stop you yeah. there, and I'm gonna give you some feedback. So the first feedback, Julia, is what I just said to Tatiana. Stop talking. <laughs> you have to stop talking. Um, so once you have the answer and you have a bit of an explanation, wait for the examiner to ask you the next question. Otherwise, you get yourself into all kinds of trouble um, trying to over explain and losing words, losing thoughts and vocabulary. So in the real IELTS, you have to use a different strategy. Okay, Julia? So okay. your, your answers, your initial answers, your first answer, your first two sentences is good enough for like a band 7.5. If you keep talking, you can drop that score to a 6.5, okay? And a 7.5 is definitely oh. better to get, so don't do that, okay? Um, let's take a look at some of what you did really well. So I asked you, can you recognize any constellations? And you said, uh, sure, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to start that again. That's okay. It's okay. It's it's okay to do that. No, it's okay to do that in the aisle. So people are nervous, especially in part one. Um, in the speaking part of the exam in IELTS, one of the main reasons for part one is to have the candidate be comfortable and as confident as possible. So if you make a mistake, if you're feeling really nervous and you need to start your answer again, it is absolutely okay to say to the examiner, 
I'm feeling really nervous. Let me start that again. It is one really? yeah, it's one hundred percent okay to do that. And as long as you start again and do a good job, they will forget that you made a whole bunch of mistakes when you started the answer. Okay. So they will kind of ignore the first answer that you gave as long as you do a better job. So it's okay to do that. It's a good strategy. It's better than to just keep talking. Okay. All right. And then you gave a very nice real condition for your answer. You said, when I was a child, it was one of my obsessions to recognize as many of the constellations as I can. Okay. Not as I do. You said, as I do, as I can. Okay. Um, and that was a really nice uh, conditional sentence, right? And then you said, uh, one that I recognize is the Taurus. And then I thought you said ball. And then I realized after, no, of course, you said bull. Um, the pronunciation there was a bit awkward, but that's okay. It happens. So just repeat after me. Bull. Bull. You almost have to spit that you out. It's like, a, it's not a ba, it's a bu, bu. It's, it, feel, it feels funny to, like, your, your mouth feels kind of funny when you do it. It's a b, bull, 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 okay, bull, ball, bull, bull, try it, ball, okay, ball, bull, and bull. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it takes a bit of practice to spit that you with the oh bull. Um, and it's, of course, Julie, I'm not just doing this for you. I'm hoping that a lot of other viewers right now who are watching this or will be watching this is, are also practicing this because it's one of the tricky words for many people in many cultures to pronounce the difference between ball and bull. Um, even little kids in Canada, they often mispronounce the two words together. So ball, bull, okay? All right. I'm just saying it's the Taurus. <laughs> just stick with exactly. Sometimes that's the day. And you know, as funny as that sounds, sometimes that's the danger of paraphrasing is that the paraphrase actually becomes a difficult word to pronounce. So once okay. you've said it, once you've said Taurus, that was good. It's fine. We know the Taurus. Orion, the hunter. Sure. Um, and then stop. You, you kept talking and that's where it got a bit weird, right? So you just stop after that. Okay. All right. Um, so same kind of advice as with Tatiana. Make sure that once you've had your answer, then just stop. Okay. All right. Concise language, okay. Julia. Concise language. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Julia, thank you so much for volunteering. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of the evening in Debrecen. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye, -bye. Bye Julia. Bye-bye. All right, that was Julie. Let's give Julia a thumbs up. That was really good. I see that uh, Carolina has a lot of messages to uh, delete from Jagruti. Not sure what Jagruti is up to there, but uh, yeah. Thumbs up to Julia. Look at that. Lots of thumbs up. See, Julia, you're doing a great job. And um, again, everybody, a lot of these mistakes, they're common, right? So, um, okay. Uh, let's uh, give Diaz a chance. Let's see what Diaz is doing. Are you ready? All right, Diaz, if you're there, let us know. And then we'll ask a few more questions about the stars. Thank you for the support, Fuang. Hi, Angel. All right, Diaz, if you're still with us, let us know so that we can get into the last few questions here talking about the stars. Diaz, it sounds like you picked up quick, but I don't hear you just yet. Did I hear something there? No. All right. Diaz, also check out your connection. Okay. So sometimes um, students, when you don't have a connection, you just want to shift, refresh the page, right? It could be that your internet connection is timed out or the page has timed out. So shift, refresh. Okay. All right. Uh, let's give Sweta a chance here. Sweta, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Sweta, if you're there, let me know.
All right. It takes a few seconds, by the way, students. There's a six second delay between real time and me, so that's why you're having to wait a little bit sometimes for um, these viewers to answer. The website is immediate, but I think some of you don't look at the website, you look at <laughs> YouTube, and then once you see it on YouTube, you're like, oh, he's answering me on the website. Um, so keep an eye on the website every now and then as well. Uh, Sweta, if you're there, give me a sign. And of course, I'm sure some of you go and grab a sandwich or a cup of coffee or go to the washroom or something. So that's also why I'm waiting for a response. All right. Michelle, let's see. Uh, Sweta, did you answer me? Oh, Sweta did answer me. Okay. Last second. Saw it pop up. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, Sweta. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm great, sir. Thank you. Am I pronouncing your name okay, Sweta? It's actually Shweta. But, Shweta. Uh, Thank yeah. you for correcting me, Shweta. Okay, um, Shweta, where are you? I'm from India, sir. From India? What part of India? Uh, South India, Hyderabad. South India, Hyderabad. Okay. Uh, Shweta, um, are you ready to answer some questions about the stars? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it then. Let's talk about the stars. Do stars have any special significance in your culture? Yes, definitely star, stars have a special significance uh, in my culture. We often believe that uh, when, um, the, when, when meteorites fall off as shooting stars, uh, they bring some good luck uh, to the viewers. We often uh, wish uh, whatever uh, we feel like um, uh, seeing the stars and it is often believed that uh, it would turn true when you uh, wish through your heart. Mm. Uh, other than this, it's also said that stars show a particular uh, direction. Um, uh, to the travelers since the North uh, Pole star is always uh, constant in the sky uh, have you ever these... made a wish upon a shooting star uh, yes uh, I did a wish when I was in my 10th grade uh, I wish that I would uh, want to score uh, above uh, 90 percentage uh, the wish did come true but uh, now I do not uh, believe in such myths uh, as I've become more open-minded um, and I believe that only through perseverance we can actually achieve success. So I've stopped believing in these uh, beliefs uh, but again, again um, it's a good thing, uh, it, it's funny sometimes. To have such beliefs. How is the visibility of stars in your hometown and is light pollution a problem? Mm. Yeah, nowadays uh, there's a lot of uh, pollution and the sky is not so clear uh, with, the, with the covered with the clouds and smog. Uh, etc. Uh, but when I was a child, the sky was uh, rather more clear. When I used to stroll um, with my mother on the terrace, I used to gaze at the sky. Uh, and that um, is the end of part one. That concludes the speaking sec, or that concludes that part. We'll go on to part two. Okay, um, Sweeta, uh, good, good. Um, it seems to be the trend for the last few volunteers. So Tatiana, Julia, and you, Sweeta, you're over speaking. You're speaking too much, okay? Um, uh, you have to, for the IELTS, especially for part one, you have to limit yourself a little bit more. So give mm -hmm. a clear, concise answer, explanation, sometimes an example, and then just stop, okay? Because the more you speak, the more potential for mistakes, okay? Especially when we're going deeper and deeper and deeper into one answer. And that's true for anybody. That's not just for somebody who's speaking a foreign language or English as a second language, but any speaker, when we talk, the more we talk on one topic or on one idea, the greater the chance that we start to communicate in an awkward, confusing way. So we have to be very careful and methodical, 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let me jump back and let me give you a little bit more advice. And again, this is advice for everybody. Okay, not just Swetha. Um, so, do stars have? any special significance in your culture yes definitely stars have a special significance in my culture it's good to do that you're using the question try to paraphrase a little bit so instead of significance you can say importance right so even if it's okay. simple paraphrasing you're going to score better when you paraphrase a bit so yes definitely stars have a special importance in my culture instead of my culture what would you call your culture? Would you call it a uh, Indian culture? Would you call it a Hindi culture, a Punjabi culture? So how would you refer to your culture when talking about the stars? Uh, basically, I think it's Indian culture. Indian culture, right? Generally. So you would say, yes, definitely stars have a special importance in Indian culture or for Indian people or for Indians, right? Um, mm -hmm we often believe that when a shooting star falls um, just repeat after me when a person sees a shooting star when a person sees a shooting star it brings them good luck it brings them good luck we often believe that when a person sees a shooting star it brings them good luck we often believe when a person sees a shooting star it brings them good luck it is often believed that their wish will come true. It's often believed that their wish will come true. When it's true of heart. When it's true of heart. Okay. All right. So turn true, a little bit awkward. It's usually come true. Your wish comes true. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, when you see present perfect or when you hear present perfect, have you ever made a wish upon a shooting star? You have to start with present perfect. Yes, I have. I have done mm -hmm. it several times. Okay. So just repeat after me. Yes, I have. I have wished upon a star several times. Yes, I have. I have wished upon a star several times. I remember distinctly wishing on a star in my 10th grade. I remember distinctly wishing on a star in my 10th grade. Okay. I don't believe in such myths is okay. There's a better word than myth here that you could use. It starts with an S. Do you know what that word is? Mm. Starts with super. Super something. Superstitions. That's right. I knew you knew it. That's why we practice before the IELTS so that we get it into our brain that, oh yeah, we know lots of words, we can use them. So I don't believe in superstition. I don't believe in superstition. Yeah, myths is okay. But again, when your IELTS examiner is sitting there and they're like band eight, band nine, why didn't she use superstition instead of myths? Myths is a little bit different in context, right? So overall, very good. I would say a solid band seven. Okay, you're fluent, you're more than fluent, you're closer to good for sure. I think you can get a 7.5, just pay attention to not over speaking, okay? Okay, sir. All right, Sweeta, thank you so much for sharing and for volunteering. I think this was your first time, right? Yes, sir, and thanks a lot for the chance. I didn't expect I would get it today. <laughs> for sure, you're very welcome. Come back again and practice again. Um, it was really good and you did a really good job for your first time, for sure, um, to, to present your English for so many people. So thank you so much for that, sweet time. Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Okay. Bye for now. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, sir. Bye. All right. Sweetha, very brave first time volunteering. I thought it was her first time and I want to give people a chance when it's their first time as well. So we want to, you know, respect, reward returning students and I want to uh, also give uh, newcomers a chance to volunteer as well. So um, so everybody keep up, the, keep up the practice and keep coming back, um, keep uh, presenting your English. Focus on those tips and strategies that I'm giving you. Um, again, this chat is not just to speak with me, um, speak with each other, use it to talk to each other, interact with each other. There are so many uh, beautiful, smart people in the chat here. Um, find speaking partners, help each other out, learn about each other's cultures, and be respectful and polite with each other. 
students, uh, we're using the website aehelp.com, which is for academic IELTS preparation. Again, we're an IDP affiliate, British Council partner. We're one of the world's uh, leading IELTS test preparation companies online. You can click the big red button there to join our premium IELTS package. Uh, for general IELTS students, it's gieltshelp.com. It's here. Carolina, thank you so much for uh, moderating the chat for us today. I see that you had a fair bit of work uh, to do to keep it clean and keep it focused. Um, students, tomorrow, I'm going to be back with uh, task two writing for members and reading for subscribers. So make sure to subscribe so you can join the chat. That's free, obviously. And for those of you who um, are looking to improve quickly, uh, join the premium version of our courses, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Thank you to all my volunteers. Um, thank you to Suitha. Thank you to uh, Julia. Thank you to Tatiana, to Munavar. Uh, it was fantastic getting to know you a little bit more. And I wish all of you a great rest of the day. Much love to all of you wherever you are on our big, beautiful blue planet Earth. Bye for now.